and good evening and welcome to another Jackson Eagles show this week. This is our first recap show. You see two fine coaches sitting beside me, Coach Darby Palmer, Coach Brian Bullard, better known as Bull. And we are looking forward to talking to you and bringing you some of the athletes and great atmosphere we have right here tonight a little different background you see our great eagles background hub city deli is closed for only one of the few times they're closed and we'll be back there next week eating those fine sandwiches and participating with their great food but tonight we need to talk about a lot of things and i'm gonna go ahead before he hushes me up he may push my button but this was win 31 for darby palmer Eric Cohue, as we told you on the broadcast, if you didn't hear it, uh, Eric Cohue is the leader with 38 victories here. And, Coach, closing in very quickly, and we're proud of you. And I know that doesn't mean a whole lot to you. It does, and it doesn't because you want to just win football games. The count is irrelevant. Absolutely, and it's a testament to our staff. We're surrounded by great coaches and, and great players, and they get all the credit for it. Um, and really, we're – I view coaching as a success as our guys go on and they're, they're better fathers, better husbands, better, better citizens. And so this number is great. And, and, yes, we are closing in on a record. But all the credit goes to the players and the assistant coaches. They put in a lot of hours to make this thing work. Absolutely, and sitting to my far right, one of the most an animated guys. He really <laughs> enjoys a football game. He coaches hard. He plays hard. He cheers hard. Is there anything that you don't do hard, Brian? Uh, you know, I try to I try to take it easy, Coach. I, I don't know about all that, but um, I, I just enjoy, um, <clears throat> as Coach Palmer said, getting to uh, work with these guys. And, and we have, to me, we have the best coaching staff in, in Tennessee, and I wouldn't trade these guys for anything in the relationships that we've built um, and, you know, how we, we help each other and walk with, with each other in life as well, too. So he's not, he's not going to talk a lot about that number, but, you know, a lot of work's gone into it, and by coaches, players, everybody. There's a lot to, to contribute. Um, but we're not done, and, and that's just something that happens along the way. You do you do get wins, and you do keep up with them, and, and that's kind of, as a head coach, that's kind of your, you know, what follows you around. So great guy to be chasing, and, and hopefully that we can just go one uh, know this week. Well, I want to talk about openers now for contest. In your tenure here, Coach, you have not had a cupcake or a Twinkie opener. We go out and play the best, and most of the time it's a larger classification than us. What's the secret of doing that? Well, it's really a testament to our off-season program and what Coach Irv does in our off-season and how our guys buy in uh, to what we do in the off-season, but not only off-season but in the preseason and putting in a lot of time in June and July that goes unnoticed uh, that really builds their confidence going out into game one. And our guys – the culture we have in our locker room right now and the leaders that you're going to hear from tonight with Cam Boyd and Wyatt Jones, um, they do a great job leading our team and getting our team ready to play. They absolutely do. Now, gentlemen, we go into a game last week. Uh, actually, we played a team that's pretty awesome. They got a quarterback that was one of the leaders in Memphis in statistics, threw for over 3,000 yards, and he's just a junior this year. They have a running back that every time he touches the football, I, I got scared that little sick feeling that a coach gets in his stomach sometimes. Got to lock up, got to lock up. Uh, we really played well. A great first half, and, and we did what we had to do when we had to do it in the second half. Absolutely. Uh, North Point's a very talented football team. As you mentioned, their quarterback, he's a three-star player, and I think he led all of Shelby County last year in passing. Um, and you could tell he was very poised in the pocket. He didn't let any rush really bother him. He was able to step up and avoid and kept his eyes downfield. And the scramble drill is what we talked about uh, Thursday night before the game, how that was, a, that was a worry to us all, that ab lib that the quarterback can do. And he did a really good job at our defense. They bended a little, but they didn't break. Uh, and we were able to pull through with a W. Really were. Coach Buller, the defense rose up. We had a, a big interception on a tip ball, and uh, I got a couple of text questions last week. Wanted to know if we holler what UT used to holler under General Nalen. Do we, when we get a, a tip ball interception or any interception, uh, holler Oski or Oski wow wow as they did at Tennessee? Absolutely. And, you know, our defense, you mentioned it, <clears throat> excuse me, they, uh, you know, early on they were they were gashing us pretty good with the run, and and we were able to come up with some some timely stops and and get them off the field on third down and get them off the field uh, a couple times on fourth down and force punts and things like that. And um, you know, first game 
and guys trying to go both ways, a lot, lot of linemen going both ways, and you know it, it was a <clears throat> it was a war. We talked about it after the game. It was a war. There was nothing easy um, about that night. You know, had some interesting things to start the night getting down there, and as we always do. But um, <clears throat> we had guys fight through some sickness and cramps and look like a triage unit down there. But we had guys step up. We had you know Lucas Witherspoon, freshman, played you know, positions he hasn't really worked at, and he stepped up there. And it's just a win that, that you hang your hat on. You you don't – and you mentioned playing these kind of <clears throat> bigger classification schools. If we are going to take the next step and, and get to that um, December game, uh, we have to play those schools because that's who we're going to run into in down the down the stretch. And those those games, these games prepare us for that, and that that's why we play them. And um, that's our kids, we're up for the challenge. And, and real quick, Coach, you mentioned the interception, and that was Elijah DeMoss. And the previous play before, two plays before, he was actually in a running back and, and fumbled the ball. And in our program, we talk about next play mentality and culture. And that's what we reminded <coughs> them as the defense was going out on the field. And then two plays later, he came up with a pick. And so we couldn't be more proud of our culture playing out in that play right well, there. Well, it's something else about your culture. A lot of people, they don't hear you say this. But I love your 111th, and he not only took care of his 111th, he probably took care of somebody else's 111th there a little bit too. <laughs> That's Elijah right. with a great interception. It takes a lot of focus Absolutely. to catch a ball like that. And, you know, normal young men want to drop that chin a little bit after you fumble or something like that. I didn't see any loss of efficiency from any of our 11 men out there, and then he makes the big play. Absolutely, and it's a testament to our culture and, and each and every – person out there owning their 111th and picking him up too so he doesn't hang his head. I want to go back to Lucas Witherspoon for a minute. Lucas is on the kickoff team and the guy hits a ball at him that mm. I probably uh, and I'm supposed to have good hands. I would have stepped out of the way of Lucas has no fear and I tell you what what was important is he got on the football and saved them from getting it back because they were hotter than a $2 pistol moving the football at that point in time. Absolutely and you know that won't be on the highlights we show here in a minute, but that's a huge play in the game. And there was there was a lot of big plays, but for Lucas to maintain composure, because most of the time when you run and dive on a ball like that, it, it squirts free, but he was able to get on it. And we were all holding our breath. And, and that's, a, that's a great play um, from a freshman. Well, it was kicked <coughs> to him at the worst possible yeah. place that you could kick it to him, right about ankle high. You don't know whether to go down and scoop, fall on it, and – uh, Mr. Fan used to tell me I was chicken. I just step out of the way of it <laughs> sometimes. Maybe it'll go out of bounds. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I thought he made a good decision. Gage Boykin made some good decisions. Two of his runs were very important because we had third and eight and third and seven in that last possession of ours. We don't maintain the football. Who knows what could have happened, mm -hmm. but we did maintain the Absolutely. position. Absolutely, and, and very proud of Gage and his performance and how he's able to grow from year to year. And we've put a little bit more on him this year in our offense, and he was able to make the right read there uh, on third down and, and tuck the ball and get us a first down and keep yep. the drive going. Of course, one of our guests tonight, uh, he's I guess you'd call him multi-purpose man or the guy that probably sells everything from hardware to Hallmark cards and stuff, and I'm just joking about that. Wyatt Jones had a good game. He has to wear a lot of hats, but we'll ask him about that a little later. Cam Boyd, uh, you guys are too young probably to remember Dick Bass, the great 1,000-yard rusher of the Rams in the 60s. Cam is almost a clone of Dick Bass. He runs <laughs> like a clock. He's smooth. He's like one of those bull of a watches <laughs> with those Rolexes or something. It's just tick-tock, tick-tock like that. And uh, he'll give you the hip, and then he'll take it away from you. He's going to be one of our guests tonight. And, of course, the man with the golden foot, Zach Cisco, will be on with us also. And uh, any other things we need to point out about the game the other night other than our young men, like I said, they did what they had to do when they had to do it. Yeah, it got close, and people saying, oh, no, white knuckler and all this good stuff like that. They, that's discipline when you do what you have to do when you have to do it. Absolutely, and nothing prepares you for game one like game one. Uh, you can do anything you want preseason scrimmage-wise. It doesn't prepare you for that first Friday night. But I was – we've already mentioned several people, and we could go down our whole roster and point out different things that people did. But a tremendous job by Zach Sisko and our whole special teams unit for just executing. I think Zach Sisko had um, 
close to a 50-yard punt, and then he was three for three with field goals. Just an outstanding job by that young man. Absolutely. Uh, he goes, and you know what? Even though he's kicking the ball well, he goes and takes lessons from Will Hoyt, the former UT kicker, and uh, that's a tremendous – that shows the kind of kids we've got in this program. They all do things to improve all the time. You know, and uh, go back to Lucas and didn't mean to. Last night I didn't even recognize him. I saw his number out there. But he has put some muscle on and lost some of, I hate to call it baby fat, but he had a couple of pounds of baby fat last year in middle school. And uh, his own grandfather didn't at first recognize him from a distance because he has muscled up some. Coach Erd's program is great for our kids. Absolutely. And, and it goes beyond just weight <clears throat> training, but all of our injury prevention that we do with our shoulders, with our knees, uh, our speed training when we go through tr our track season, just he does an outstanding job getting our players' bodies ready to play the game of football. Now, we've had a big day here, and Coach, your assistant dean of students, I got it right this week, plus he wears about five other hats <laughs> also, teaches some class and does things like that. We had some young men uh, sign some uh, scholarships today, and that's important because Jackson Christian is all about academics as well as mm -hmm. athletics. And that that's right, Coach. And, and here where we're sitting, uh, Brady Webb signed um, – to play golf at Fried Hardman, to continue his golf career. He's he's a member of our, our really solid golf team. Uh, that was today. And then we'll have Braden Riddle, uh, his good buddy, uh, will be signing on Friday also to join him at Fried Hardman to play golf. And that's that's awesome for those guys to continue to do that, but also to get to play together um, and continue their careers that way. Um, and, and just a testament to how hard they work. They lived at the golf course and, and – you know, they've had great coaching and, and guys leading them, and it's just a, a really good um, opportunity for them, and we're proud of those guys. Absolutely, and I think we, we've we got all of our fall sports going on, and our volleyball team is, I think, playing mostly a JV schedule, mm -hmm. but uh, we're building a program. But something I'm really proud of, last week the middle school team Mm. took on about as fast a middle school team and as big as you'll ever see. Those guys cast shadows uh, longer than I am tall. They were so big from JCM. We did lose. It was 8-8 eight eight right down to the uh, last part. There was a kickoff return that might we might have stretched our lanes a little bit defending it. But, geez, 16-8 against a team like that, I'm proud of our young men. Absolutely, and it's awesome to see young guys in our program, in our elementary and middle school, stepping up and buying into what their coaches are teaching them from game to game and making a huge growth from game one to game two. And we're excited to see what they do this Thursday night. Absolutely. And then, Coach, last night, you saw when I came in, I started talking about the <laughs> JV game last night. I thought uh, uh, Elijah DeMoss put on a, a good show. He got some reps at quarterback. Austin Kelly threw the ball all over the lot. And, folks, when I say that, that doesn't mean he was missing. He was hitting them. And uh, we beat a good Tipton Rosemark team last night. Yeah, and those those games are fun, uh, getting those guys that put in all the work that, that it, these guys on Friday night put in and get the opportunity to come out and turn the lights on and, and fill the stands and watch them and their, their teammates supporting them and, and guys getting reps and, you know, uh, I think about Chandler um, just being excited out there and a lot of those guys that were eighth graders last year getting to play and, and some of our, you know, juniors that, that work on our scout team and, and give these guys a great look getting out there. And those are fun. Those are – that's yes. great atmosphere um, and just excited to see those guys out there, Mason Vaughn doing his thing and, um, you know, Deuce out of the backfield and Everett oh, Scott running the ball. Everett Scott running the ball hard and, um, you know, guys just making plays. And yeah. it was it was a fun night. Well, it was good to see Tristan Nash back on the field. Yeah. At, uh, that's an ominous-looking cast. Now they're more foam rubber and stuff, and they protect. Somebody did a great job. I presume Dynamics tr uh, wrapped his hand and got mm -hmm. him ready. It was just good to see him back on the field. And he was playing a tough position, left tackle. thought the young man handled it well because – Quarterback can't see who's coming from the left side, and that tackle is, you know, it's like insurance over there. Absolutely, and we have a really good freshman line, guys that buy into what Coach Riker's teaching them. Uh, but Luca, uh, Lucas and Tristan both do a really good job as bookend tackles for us, and, and it's really great to have Tristan back. Guys, can you think of anything we've left out? Because we've got too many good things happening at Jackson Christian School. 
Uh, there's some more stuff that uh, we have going on Friday that we could talk about later yeah, on we'll, the show. Yeah, we'll do that. I well. mean, we you know got a couple guys signing, JV game, volleyball going on, there's soccer going on, there's middle school softball going on. It's a full day here, and it's awesome to see the parking lot full um, and all these athletes out. And, and some some people going from tennis to playing softball, and we got multiple sport folks and uh, just a good time. It's almost looking like the spring. Usually the spring is where it's so crazy, but – uh, today, there's been a bunch of people on campus, and, and that's awesome. Showcase yeah, these talents. Book this. There was plenty of math problems work today. A lot of chemistry. <laughs> that's right. Problems solved. There was some good history in government. Coach Reichard getting after yeah. it in the English classroom. Oh, yeah, yeah, Coach, you're getting after it there. <laughs> now, what we need to do, though, we're going to transition and take our first break. You want to call five people because the man that runs like a, a watch, a Rolex, Swiss, Boulevard watch or something like that, Cam Boyd's going to be with us Let's Let's take that time out on the Jackson Eagles show. Pub City Deli is honored to sponsor Jackson Christian Athletics. Gourmet chef Peter Thomas invites you in for a totally new experience in craft sandwiches, wraps, and salads. The homemade hoagies are baked fresh. A big favorite is Pete's brisket hoagie with brisket, smoked Texas style. The Hub City Burger is a Jackson favorite. The salads are always fresh and unique. Hub City Deli is open for breakfast as well. Located on Pleasant Plains Extended, just down the road from Jackson Christian. Back with the Jackson Eagles show. This is the first week of it, a full week. We had a, a preview show last week of all of our sports. And Coach Riker's fixing to step in here. And uh, I know we promised you can, but I uh, got a text that said, I needed to give you all more time to let five people know that he's coming mm -hmm. on. And so we're going to give you a little extra time. But right now, you want to be talking to Coach Riker. This man is excited. He's coaching them up, and that's what you want to do. He's also going to talk about some replays and some good ones. But, Coach, your evaluation of last week's game and how your young men did that you particularly work with. I tell you what, I was most excited. Um, North Point did a really good job taking away our big play. Um, and if you've watched our games in the past, you know, we always hit that one big run or that big pass. Um, but North Point decided they they weren't going to let us hit that big play. But our mentality – our willingness to come out and just kind of grind it out um, three yards, four yards at a time. Um, that takes a lot of mental fortitude. And I was super proud of our line. I'm super proud of Cam. Um, you know, sometimes it's frustrating when you're only getting three or four yards at a time. Um, but I thought our mentality, um, doing our job, trusting our rules, um, it paid off, especially there in the end of the fourth quarter when we had to grind out that clock. Well, I was going to ask you about that because yes, I really think that some young men made some good decisions. We went to third and long. I think third and eight was one of them. Third and seven mm -hmm. was another one. And we were able to sustain the drive. And like I talked with Coach Bull and Coach P about this, discipline. And the definition of discipline to me is doing what you have to do when you have to do it. <coughs> yes, we sir. did that on that drive. Yes, sir. It could have been a turning point if we don't get those first downs. Oh, yes, sir. And any time you get in that situation, that four-minute situation where you're trying to bleed clock, the defense knows what you're trying to do. And they're they're calling up every blitz, every stunt to try to take that away. And we actually watched film on Monday. Um, we have an end zone copy. And the blitzes at North Point was drawn up. You had two linebackers crossing, linemen going everywhere. But they did their job. And, you know, what we preached all summer, you know, just – it has to be muscle memory when you're in that situation. Yeah. When the legs are dead, when you're tired, when you're just trying to survive. And I was so proud of those guys. On the last <coughs> play, Daniel Green's got two guys crossing in front of him. He picks up the right guy, ends up blocking two guys into the gap we're trying to run to and able to spring cam for a, a, um, a big run. Um, and Daniel's a guy I would brag on too. We got guys all over the place who are selfless players. But Daniel's a guy, you look at him, he's 6'5", has every right to think, man, I should be getting more targets, more balls. But that does not affect how he goes out there and blocks. And he's a huge asset in our run game. He's got that big frame. He just washes down the side of the line. And he'll get those balls. Oh, absolutely. Defense dictates how many 
attempts that sure. somebody gives you. And mm-hmm. Daniel catch that, what we used to call the old hot pass. He'll That's get right. that before it's over with. Don't be giving away my secrets, guys. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, I never did catch one. They, they didn't want to put me in anyway. You couldn't see me. I was below, I was below line level instead yeah. of sea level. Now, a couple of other things that happened. thought our blocking for a first game, the whole offensive line really did well. We only had a few minor mistakes, and and uh, usually you're not that good. Any team is not that good in their first game. Oh, yeah, and I, I told them after that first drive, they came over, and they were a little frustrated because we had the, the two offsides penalties. I think we had a holding, and I looked at the scoreboard. I said, look, guys, you made those mistakes, and we still put points on the board. The first came jitters. You're going to get them. We're going to have things we've got to clean up. Um, but like I said earlier, they, they kept trusting the process. They kept doing their jobs. Um, and, and, Coach, I don't know if you realize this. We had um, we had nine guys play on the offensive line Friday night. Well, I knew you had um, eight, so yeah, I, I missed and, counting one. It of. was um, – and we had guys there at the end that were playing out of position, um, but they were willing to go in there and just block somebody hard, you know. And right. that type of mentality – that Coach P talked about culture early on. That speaks to our culture where we have guys who not only know what to do at different positions, but – know how to go in there and give maximum effort when well, the game. You never going. know when your bell's going to be rung as far as calling, hey, Coach Bullard, you go in the ball game. He's been standing on the sideline. Was he focused? And yes, they were. Yes, sir. And in key drives, um, we had Lucas playing tackle who had been repping guard all week. We had Dalton DeLoach playing tackle who had been repping guard all week. Um, but, man, I just – I can't say enough about those guys' work ethics. And, um, you know, they don't say a whole lot. They're a pretty quiet group, but they just go out there and work. Um, and I, I love coaching those guys. Coaches, are we ready to show some great highlights? I'm excited about Let's those. Paul Schultz, he worked hard to get these ready for us. Gary always does a good job with that. We're going to take a look. Coach Rickard's going to take us through the, as you see, y'all don't, but we see the countdown. Coach, it's all yours. All right, They're let's coming see what up. we got here. All right, this is our first scoring drive. So what we're trying to do here is, you see, we got Jay running a little bubble route, and we're trying to draw eyes um, so we can get Banky open deep in the end zone there. And – you know, it doesn't look pretty, <laughs> um, but that <coughs> cornerback, he, he's actually fallen because he's trying to recover because he is bit up um, trying to take away Jay, um, and he ends up slipping and falling. And that's the guy later on that had the same play, and he ended up just running over Banky. Well, we um, almost <laughs> faked him out of his britches. <laughs> now, um, like, Coach, this is unbelievable right here. I love my line, but we, we didn't do much right here. This touchdown is – that's all Cam Boyd right there. That You're talking about second effort and not being denied into the end zone. I mean, let's see how many cuts he makes here in the box. I mean. Well, he got more moves than a hula <coughs> girl. Oh, it's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> Look, I mean, our, we get blown up right there. That's one cut. That's two cuts, three cuts. I mean, that's just effort. You can't coach that. That's just I'm getting the ball in the end zone no matter what. Now, here comes yeah. a big one right here. This ref, this ref fooled us right here. I thought he was giving the touchdown signal, and he hit us with the safety at the last moment. But, hey, we'll take a safety to the points on the board. The two points were important. Yes, sir, we'll but, folks, back. when the replay comes up, watch <laughs> where the football comes out. Oh, yeah. I'm never going to question a ref on a judgment call. I get that. Heat of the moment. But, hey, how about Jack Collins getting yeah. back there? You're talking about effort. Oh, Jack, that's, he looked like he was chasing a fly ball down <laughs> the outfield on the speed. baseball team. Look at this. Cisco, do you, know, do you know how big of a comfort blanket it is as a play caller to know that when you get within the 25, you can – Put points on the board. Yeah. Well, there awesome. are teams that would give their IT oh to have Zach Cisco right just now. Talk about not having pressure, just knowing you can come out there. Just awesome. Cisco was unbelievable. Three things got to happen. The snap was good, the hole was good, and the kicker kept his head and, down and blasted. And it. our front line does a good yep. job. Um, North Point was jumping. You're not supposed to be able to do that. No, you're no. not. But we did a good job building a wall. Those guys are coming pretty hard. Oh, they were they were they wanted bad. They thought they could block one. I could hear a couple there. Oh, we're gonna get coach, one. We're let gonna me, let get me tell one. you something. As somebody who did this in college, that's the least fun position on a football field. Yeah. Being the front line on that field goal unit. Yeah, absolutely. Because you're you're pretty defenseless right there. Well, that's a little too much leakage right there up front. Yeah. Yep. And there was a little contact with Zach. I noticed that the night and had forgotten mm-hmm. about it. You cannot touch the kicker after mm-hmm. a kick. No, Cisco did a great job. He did because he kept his concentration. Oh, absolutely. And here's another Mitchell's replay, one of our fine sponsors. Yeah, this week we're going to need to clean up some of that penetration up front. What do you think? Yep. <laughs> yeah. We'll work on that. <coughs> and we are back here. And, 
Coach, a uh, f- couple of final statements and talk about it, any player that you want to or your whole line. I, I just thought it was a good offensive effort, and we did. We didn't have the long play like you said, mm-hmm. but you showed me something with sustaining a drive, you're, and the penalties, you're right, did not get us down. You're exactly right. Um, first game, you're always going to have things you have to clean up. Um, we have to clean up some of the penalties. Um, as much as I love Cisco, I would much rather score touchdowns in the red zone. Um, so turning some of those field goals into points. Um, again, I, I bragged on my line, but again, I want to go back to the skilled players, just how unselfish we are. Um, I mentioned this last week, but you don't have guys calling for the ball or trying to get a certain amount of touches. Um, they're blocking for each other. They're celebrating one another. Um, and, you know, at the beginning of the third quarter, Coach P said on the headset, hey, we need a long drive right here. And knowing that we can do that, that, you know, yeah, we like throwing the ball. We like spreading the ball around. But um, when it's time to kill clock and, you know, move the ball down the field, we have the capability to get on the back of Cam, get on the back of Elijah, in the back of our O-line, and, and just run the rock. That, that's, a, that's a blessing. And that's a tribute to the way our guys work, especially against a pretty physical front that North Point had. But they were very mm-hmm. physical. And I know they had one lineman, the young man's name escaped. We had a little trouble with him last year if you went back and, mm-hmm. and, and I hate that I forgot who he was. We got him blocked. I, I didn't really call his name, and no. neither did David very much. Right. And it's a great job of that. Mm-hmm. Coach Bullard, anything you want to add before we take our next break and get the man? We've given them time to call everybody and tell them. No, I, I, Coach Riker does a great job, and yeah, I was trying to help him out too, just keeping an eye on who was cramping and who was down. And um, he spent most of the time when – when we were on on defense, trying to figure out his next five going in on <laughs> on offense, and, got a little thin there for a while. Coach. Yeah, it was it was <laughs> tough, and and he you know he did a great job with that, staying composed, and you know our composure keeps the kids composed, and and that's number one thing we have to remember, because we like to get fired up, we like to we like to get it you know after the officials a little bit and things like that, but our guys feed off of us, and and this is a great guy to keep our offense calm, to keep uh, Gage calm and, and these guys, and, and he does a great job, and uh, I'm, I'm glad he's on our side. I am too. Coach, you are, you're always welcome. Come in here. And if you just want to talk football, call me up, and we'll go eat over at Hub City that Deli. That sounds good, Coach. You're buying. <laughs> oh, I'm buying. I'm buying. Uh, especially if they got the Piggy Sue sandwich, right. I'm, I'm buying. Well, and hey, Coach, I want to say, well, I really appreciate everything you do for us. Um, oh, I don't know if you know this, but after games, I always go back and watch the stream. Um, I love hearing y'all's analysis, and I love watching our guys interact. You don't really get to see that when you're in the yeah. middle of the game. Well, I w- I'm glad to have David. David Wade adds so much yes, to sir. a broadcast, and he knows he still knows those rules backwards, forward, yes, sir, sideways, upside down. He was on top of it Friday night. He was Friday mm-hmm. night. Dave Dave loves being here at Jackson Christian. He uh, he'll be with us all of the season. We're going to take a time out, and when we come back, the man that you're supposed to call five people to hear, Count Boyd, will be with us. Hub City Deli is honored to sponsor Jackson Christian Athletics. Gourmet chef Peter Thomas invites you in for a totally new experience in craft sandwiches, wraps, and salads. The homemade hoagies are baked fresh. A big favorite is Pete's brisket hoagie with brisket, smoked Texas style. The Hub City burger is a Jackson favorite. The salads are always fresh and unique. Hub City Deli is open for breakfast as well. Located on Pleasant Plains Extended, just down the road from Jackson Christian. And we are back here on the Jackson Eagles show, and we've got one of the finest young men I know. He's not just a great football player, but off the field. And uh, I'm not going to say my line about that I can talk more trash as a $2 radio, but he can talk a lot, and he doesn't have to be on a $2 radio. Coach Bull, I'm going to let you introduce him because Coach Bull's a player's coach. Coach, we are in the in the midst right here. Uh, Mr. Cam Boyd, uh, let's just run down his game. Uh, Friday night, 22 carries, 101 very hard-earned yards and one touchdown that we just saw um, from our highlights. And, and Cam, nothing was easy. Um, he, he, had to, he had to earn it. Our line had to earn it. Um, and, and we are proud to have number three on with us tonight. Well, Cam, you're advancing towards 
Uh, you're in four, fourth place now, all-time career rushing. You're going towards records, but the record you like the best is winning football games, isn't it? Yes, sir. That's right. That's right. You do. What's the secret of the running? Because I, I described it a while ago as the movements and a real fine watch like a Rolex or something that the – were, is this all God-given? Did you have to work on it? Have you worked on your acceleration? What makes Cam Boyd the, I call it a TikTok runner, and there's a man you won't know much about, Dick Bass, 1,000-yard rusher in the NFL several times, in the NFL Hall of Fame, you run exactly like Dick Bass. Okay. Well, honestly, I feel like it's a little bit of both, you know, God-given, and then I had to work for it. More on the lines of I had to work for it because nothing comes easy. You know, if you want to work on your craft, you have to continue to practice it and just go about it every day just to get better, um, to make it more fluent. That way you don't have to think about it when it's actually time to do it. Um, but in the run game and things, honestly, I just say, you know, for a running back, you just you just have to be patient, you know. You got to trust your line. You, you have to have chemistry. The love has to be there. See, football is not just a, a me sport. You truly have to have your team with you. You know, it's, it's 11 people on the field, not just one. So you got to take that into consideration. You know, if you have your guards pulling or you got to block for one of your wide receivers, you know, it's it's always being selfless. And you also just have to trust that your other teammate has your back on the field. So me being patient, I just know that I have faith and trust in my guards and my pullers to pull and block for me and to get me in the right alignment to where I can go and perform for them. And quickly remind people, when you started playing football, where, and uh, I know you've been here at Jackson Christian, I know you play what, four, this is your fourth year to play football here. Honestly, this is my third year. Third, just your football. third year. You yes, play sir. As a freshman then. Yes, okay. sir. I was ineligible my freshman year, so I was a water boy then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, all state water boy. But um, I started playing football when I was around eight years old. Um, County League, We I played for. Who did I play for? Hunt's Brothers Pizza. That's the team. Hunt Brothers Pizza, and then I went to a travel league for um, West Tennessee Lions, and then my dad's travel league football team, which is Tennessee Elite Diesel Center. But now your dad played a little football at one time. You know anything about what he did when he played? I know my dad was safety. He said he didn't really like to play running back, but at um in one game he did have to play running back, and Let's just say he was moving so fast that he probably didn't even know what he was doing. But my dad was a quick – he was a quick player. He was truly an athlete. And at times I, I try to achieve what he did and to do better. You know, that's that's really the goal of every son. But, yes, sir. And that's what he wants you to do is be an improvement on – he's worked hard to give you a good life. But yes, sir. What about favorite moment? Would it be, I think, with 4.4 seconds to go and – Alden Smith trots out on the field, and uh, you know what I'm talking about. Is that your favorite moment in Jackson Christian football? Uh, Honestly, for you? Pro- yes, sir. I would have to say that. But um, you know, Lord's willing, we can we can create some more favorite moments this year, and some deeper moments, you know. But that that's probably what that probably would have to be my favorite moment. Yes, sir. Coach Bullard, this is a man after my own heart. You know what his favorite uh, thing about Jackson Christian football is? What's that? Practice. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. He's he, not Allen <laughs> Iverson. He likes practice. <laughs> he does, and and he brings a lot of energy, um, and and enthusiasm, and you know he he practices hard every day. Coach, you got a couple of questions for this young man. I got one or two more, but I'm gonna let you talk to him a little bit because you get to see him every day. You're fortunate. I don't get to see him every day. That's right. Uh, Cam, my my only question for you is, um, is is there a sense of urgency with this being your last go um, at the high school level, or are you just trying to take it game by game, day by day, not focused on that? Is that in the back of your mind? What what's your thought process as you enter into your senior season and your last season? With these guys, hopefully there's something else for you out there um, after this, but I'm just talking about right now on the high school level. Honestly, I just I just put my faith and trust in God, you know. Um, whatever he has set forth for us, you just have to go along with it and believe and trust that he has your back. So I just take it one day at a time, you know, wake up, say my prayer, you know, try to make sure that I'm mentally prepared for school. But all in all, like I said, I just – I'm here – I do what, the, what I feel like the Lord wants me to do. Absolutely. Go lead every day, you know, day by day. So I take it nice and slow. There you go. 
Now, I know you've got a favorable, favorite Bible verse, and I think that's very important. We, we go to a fine Christian school. We've got one of the nicest sets of young men in, in the school. What's your favorite verse, though? Romans 831 is my favorite verse. Now, I want you to tell them also what your favorite food is. I, favorite I like food. his choice, but it was interesting. I've not seen this before. My favorite food is chicken alfredo. Yeah. I, I, Oh, my goodness. I love chicken alfredo. <laughs> it's my favorite. Now, I'm going to ask you one last thing, then I'll let you if Coach Bull's got one more. You say that uh, a fun fact about you is I can do over 10 muscle muscle ups in a row. Tell everybody what a muscle up is. Okay, so a muscle up is kind of like a pull up. You can pull up, and then from there, you're able to pull your body all the way up. Um, it's not the best example. If we had like a bar, I could show <laughs> you, but, you know, we don't have a bar. Yeah. Sorry. Well, that's good. Cam, you got anything you want to say to not only our Jackson Christian fans, we got people from other schools listening to us too tonight. Um, thank you all for tuning in. Um, I hope that you can continue to see us out. Thank you for showing love, and just keep God first. Absolutely. We want to thank Cam Boyd, the fine running back, and you can see Cam's touchdown again mm-hmm. on the pregame show Friday night. So you want to make sure you watch that. The whole broadcast is archived on YouTube. And like I said, if you get a chance, meet this fine young man. Let's take a time out. And when we come back, I believe Brother Wyatt Jones will be with us according to my schedule. And I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to ask him what all he sells, does, and all that. Because mm-hmm. nobody does more things than he does at this school. We'll be back Sucks. after this. Pub City Deli is honored to sponsor Jackson Christian Athletics. Gourmet chef Peter Thomas invites you in for a totally new experience in craft sandwiches, wraps, and salads. The homemade hoagies are baked fresh. A big favorite is Pete's brisket hoagie with brisket, smoked Texas style. The Hub City Burger is a Jackson favorite. The salads are always fresh and unique. Hub City Deli is open for breakfast as well. Located on Pleasant Plains Extended just down the road from Jackson Christian. Back with our next guest on the Jackson Eagles show. And we're in week one recap. And, again, uh, the assistant dean of students. He's also a player's coach himself. I'm going to let her let him introduce our next guest, who's also one of my favorites because I get to do his baseball games in addition to his football games. Coach, we uh, we have senior, uh, one of our captains, uh, one, of the, the, one of the leaders on our defense, um, number seven uh, on the field, and, and Wyatt Jones, and uh, looking at looking at some stats from him from Friday night: five tackles with one tackle for loss, um, and and one running on the field um, late, trying to get out of the locker room, trying to make sure we're not cramping up, staying hydrated, all that. Uh, but Wyatt, you, you've been mentioning it. he does anything we ask him to do. Um, you know, leader of our defense, he goes in on offense and. Uh, just a tremendous young man. I, I get to spend time with him, uh, football, but also baseball. Uh, my son loves him. Uh, they were looking at baseball cards together in the office the other day. Um, so he, he just does a lot for our school. And Wyatt Jones here with us tonight. Oh, he really does. He can play <laughs> linebacker. He can play fullback. He can play tight end. I call it H-back sometimes. You listen. How many years have you been at Jackson Christian? I've been here since I was a sixth grader. So I guess it would be this my seventh year. Seventh year. And I'm going to go ahead and get your favorite sports memory. Um, what is your favorite sports memory? Definitely uh, beating USJ my sophomore year, that kick. just I, I was the long snapper on that play, so seeing it just go through the uprights, that was a big moment for me. Well, this is for Bill Hamilton. I'm going to ask this. Uh, what's one of your other favorite moments? Because you must like the University of Memphis just a little bit. I'm a pretty big Memphis fan. So uh, 2019 – had a pretty good squad. Got a got a good group of guys going. Good coach, Mike Norvell. He's at Florida State now, though. Made me sad. But uh, me and my dad, we got a good chance to go out and watch a couple of Memphis games. And we ended up at the Liberty Bowl in 2019 when they won their first conference championship. So that was a good memory. Watching them beat Cincinnati two weeks in a row. 
Yeah, now, Cam like chicken Alfredo, which uh, I know people, I love it myself. But now you've got, you're into the chicken line, too, a little yeah. bit. What's your favorite food? I do wings. I do anything wings, any sauce, any restaurant. If there's wings on the menu, I'm, I'm knocking them down. Absolutely. And, of course, I've already mentioned it. And let's give baseball a little plug. This man gets down and dirty in baseball. He's one of the best catchers around here. And, folks, he sacrifices his body to uh, – Block pitches, do things like that. Sometimes our pitchers do throw the old 59-foot curveball and stuff up there. What's the correlation to how good you are in baseball to hitting people in football? Uh, I think that being a catcher in baseball and then playing football, they they, they correspond pretty well because, like, baseball, you just got to be willing to put your body on the line and sacrifice for your team when you're catching. So it's a lot, very similar to football. Would you like to intercept a pass and take it all the way playing linebacker? It's a long way. It depends where <laughs> we are. But, yeah, I'll try my best. I got one last year, but I ran out of bounds just, uh, just for the team. Didn't want to fumble or anything. <laughs> Coach, you got a couple of questions for this fine young man who will stroke you if he gets a chance to. That's right. Um, and I'm going to ask him kind of a similar question I asked uh, Cam Boyd. And, why, you know, not to get all sentimental and, you know, but this is your – your last go at it with us and in the uh, football program here and and how are you approaching that are you approaching your senior year differently or is it just kind of business as usual for you what what is your thought process with that uh i've i've always been a guy that kind of embraced the moment just kind of had takes a positive outlook at everything so it's pretty similar to my past couple of years but just knowing that i'm a senior it's my last season with these guys i'm not gonna get to see some of these guys anymore after this year i've been trying to be more of a leader, hold some guys accountable that I haven't held accountable in the past and just want to continue to improve every year that – it's every year that I've been here we've gotten better, better record, better outcome. So last year I hope we can finish it, win the last game and take home a gold ball. That's right. And you, you pra practiced all summer, um, all last year uh, at the Will Linebacker. Um, we have an injury early uh, with Kai going down and, and we put you in the middle. Um, does that – does that change your mindset, or is it just this is where the team needs me? I need to move to the middle. I'm, I'll get in here and mix it up. What is how has that transition been for you? And I know you've worked there, you've repped it, but there's a difference in repping it in practice and and doing it in the game. So how how has that been, and how was that week one uh, when the bullets are flying and those linemen are coming at you? I kind of like playing on the inside. It gives me a, it gives me more opportunity to make plays. So going into it, I was kind of like, let's go, like I'm ready to do it because that's where I started off on defense in high school. So I was kind of excited to get back in the middle and do some dirty work. That's right. And there's a lot to be said for that will position coach and, and being patient and, and knowing that um, when they, they run, something folds back, you got you got a trusty guy like Wyatt Jones there. But now also what a huge weapon, being able to put him in the middle um, when Kai goes down. And we're hoping Kai uh, is back in a couple of weeks and, and we'll see what happens with our rotations there. But – uh, it's good to have this one to, to put in he there. He is very flexible. He's shown that in baseball. I've got to ask you this. You, you're doing some long snapping. And Walker Ray held that for four years, and you probably didn't get many reps get long snapping. You're snapping with or without your gloves? I had that question text to me. i got to take them off. Without can, those stinky things, I I've got to take lie. them from him every time we go yeah. snap a field goal. i got to take the gloves off, and i got to have uh, Cisco run me out of town because if I don't, I'll roll one like I did last Friday. The uh, do the referees ever hand you a ball or one get out there with a little stick them and stuff on there? Nah. Well, I, the reason I ask that is sometimes that can mess up snapping the football yeah. or engage his case throwing the football if something's on that football. And of course, we've already told you he's a great baseball player. You didn't start according to this. Your fun fact: till the eighth grade playing football, remarkable progress. That's right. Mm -hmm. So I I never really was asked, like my parents never asked me. I've always been a shorter guy, but when I was younger, I was really thin. I was really skinny. You can see my ribs and everything. So my parents never asked me to play if I wanted to play football, which I never thought anything about it. And then middle school, uh, Coach P and some of my friends were like, hey, man, come play, come play. Well, I actually ran cross country as a sixth and seventh grader, so I didn't want to play and run cross country. But then by my eighth grade year, I was like, I'm not really a good runner. Let's try something else out. So I started playing football. Absolutely. Let's give the fans a last statement. I know all of our young men are articulate, but what do you want to say to those fans? Uh, just thank you all for coming out and supporting. I want to shout out the, the student section, the cheer team, and the band. 
they always do a great job at our games and just supporting us and being our number one fan. So I want to shout them out. Sounds like a winner. There he is, a fine young man. You can catch him in football or baseball, either one. Wyatt Jones, we're going to take another time out. And when we come back, the Golden Thunderfoot himself will be up here. He's not going to kick any for you tonight, but he's going to talk a lot. Let's take that time out. Hub City Deli is honored to sponsor Jackson Christian Athletics. Gourmet chef Peter Thomas invites you in for a totally new experience in craft sandwiches, wraps, and salads. The homemade hoagies are baked fresh. A big favorite is Pete's brisket hoagie with brisket, smoked Texas style. The Hub City Burger is a Jackson favorite. The salads are always fresh and unique. Hub City Deli is open for breakfast as well. Located on Pleasant Plains Extended, just down the road from Jackson Christian. Back with the Jackson Eagles show, and you've heard of the man with the golden arm. You've seen the James Bond movies, but we got the man with the golden foot, and I'm going to turn it over to Coach Bullard to introduce this fine young man. Yes, sir, Coach. We got um, one of the hardest working folks in our program uh, here with us tonight, and and you saw you saw that hard work on display um, Friday. This guy is a tireless worker. Um, he goes through you know our warm ups and then kind of does his thing in, in practice and. You know, you'll come up here. I, I pretty much live here about six, seven days a week. Come up here, and uh, there's a good chance you'll see him kicking. There's a good chance that um, he he's putting in some work, and and that that's what it takes to be. And I was never a kicker, but the, it takes that kind of practice and dedication. And Zach Cisco uh, with us tonight. A uh, little stat line here: one one for one on extra points, uh, three field goals, three for three, 32, 35, and thirty. Um, and I think I think two touchbacks and then one tackle. He's getting after it on on special teams, and and they kind of got us on a return. And uh, Zach was there to get him out of bounds. And I didn't realize that I knew the kicks were deep. I didn't realize that all three of them were over 30 yards. And when I saw that, I was even more impressed with Will. Uh, I almost did what Chase did. I almost called him Will. Got to get out of that. But Zach Cisco here with us tonight. Yeah, and I have done that too because Will, his older brother. Uh, did do color with me one year after we had a fine career catching passes and doing a few other things. But let's talk about Zach now. Uh, you wear number 14, right? And you you graduate next year. We get to watch you kick the football again for another year. That's good. Now, the other night when you went for a tackle, and Coach Palmer tell me it's not true, I saw him get a little pale when you went to tackle. <laughs> do you like tackling people? Uh, yes, sir. I mean, I don't really. like. If I got to do it, I'm going to do it. To well, stop him. Well, I know you will because you're a very disciplined young man. Let's talk about you, though, a little bit. Um, how many years at Jackson Christian? I think eight. Eight years. That That is great. Now, you've got a favorite sports memory and then a uh, favorite Jackson Christian school football moment. What's your favorite sports memory? And then we'll give the Jackson Christian favorite memory. Um, I think it will have to be the USJ. When we got the game winning field goal, Alden, yep. that'll have to be it. Yeah, you did. did you like the Auburn kick against Alabama? Yeah, that one okay. too. That yeah. one too. That's your <laughs> overall. But that was a great victory. Yes, and, uh, of course, your predecessor, I believe, Alden Smith, was the one that drilled that one. And yeah. um, you've come along. You also double as punter. How tough is that? Because, you know, in the NFL, not many people double as a punter and a place kicker. Yeah, it's a lot harder for me. I'm more of – I like doing kickoff and field goal more, and I'd work a lot work a lot harder at punting this off season okay. than the other two. Pizza, favorite food? Yes, sir. Oh, I love what class do you like the most? Uh, I think math. Boy, you're going to make some money someday. People that can do math, they can be chemists, they can do all kinds of doctors have that going. And, Coach, I'm going to turn it over to you for a couple of questions. Uh, Zach, just talk us walk us through your – uh, your pre, let's let's say field goal extra point. Um, what what is your thought process? What is your routine? What are you doing to get your mind right before you kick the football? Well, I just like to keep my head clear, not really think about anything but me and the ball. And then I get one in the net, and I'm ready. Yeah. 
And does and that builds your confidence? Yes, sir. And you mentioned that that you're naturally you're more uh, field goal extra point guy, but man, watching you punt has been awesome, and and that evolution and. Um, you know, is that something that you just worked on on your own, or is that somebody that you worked with, or how have you been able to to make that that next step in your punting game? Yeah, definitely James Wilhoy and Alden or um, Aaron Medley. They're <laughs> both my kicking coaches. They're a big help. Awesome, and that's two two Tennessee guys. I I like that. Yes. But Zach, it, it's been um, been awesome to watch, and and as Coach Reichert said, as as an offensive coordinator, he knows that. Um, you know, those those in between downs and, you know, in years past where we've just had to go for it. Um, it's awesome to have Zach there to, to lean on and um we we have confidence in him that he's gonna nail a kick. Is and I've got to ask him something now. Your fun fact is you like to fish and your hobby is fishing. Is that a good thing for a kicker to do, just go fishing and get away from it every once in a while? Yeah, I guess I just like just fun to do something by myself. With friends. Yeah. Well, I got to ask you, who's the better fisherman? That rascal over there, your dad, or you? Definitely me. <laughs> are you better than your grandfather? I don't know about him. I've never been fishing with him. So. Well, you take going with the East Jackson uh, guy, and uh, this councilman Cisco is his granddad, who's a great guy. And uh, I don't know if we knew you how to catch fish over in East Jackson or not. I'm I'm from that way too at one time. The um, it's a great year. You've got one more left. What would you like to accomplish in the two years you've got left here? I hope I just get one game-winning field goal. That's all I want. Well, I'd say even though it didn't happen at the end of it, it took a big step towards that the other night. Yes, Your sir. turn to say anything hey, you coach, want to. Hey, Coach, before, before yeah. we do that, let's yeah. let's talk about our Twitter poll. Um, okay. And while we got him here, and this is one of the big reasons he's here with us tonight, uh, we had three guys up for uh, Player of the Week, Southern Capital Player of the Week, uh, Zach, uh, Cam Boyd and, and Gage Boykin were the three uh, that were nominated in the fans. And I think the last time I looked, it had over 100 votes um, in a landslide with Zach Sisko. And, and so we're sitting here in the presence of, of the Southern Capital Player of the Week. And what a tremendous honor for him as far as people looking and watching that game and going, you know, Cam had a great run and a bunch of good runs. Banky had a, a touchdown. Gage threw some good passes. There was a lot, but let's yeah. let's bring in the guy that that stayed poised and, yeah. and kicked three field goals for us and um, really kind of settled us down. And, and those points turned out to be well, large. Gives yeah. teammates confidence. Zach, congratulations! The Southern Capital Award is a very impressive award, and not everybody uh, gets it. Uh, so you are to be honored. Your final statement. Uh, just thanks to all the fans who come out and support us and filling up the student section. Go Eagles. Absolutely. There he is. You want to watch him kick. I'm serious. He's worth the price of admission just to watch him kick sometime. Come and see him. Now we're going to come back, and co hopefully Coach Palmer will be with us for the closing of this show, and he's got information. He and Coach Bullard know more than – anybody else in America. They got probably the two highest IQs. We'll be back after this timeout. Pub City Deli is honored to sponsor Jackson Christian Athletics. Gourmet chef Peter Thomas invites you in for a totally new experience in craft sandwiches, wraps, and salads. The homemade hoagies are baked fresh. A big favorite is Pete's brisket hoagie with brisket, smoked Texas style. The Hub City Burger is a Jackson favorite. The salads are always fresh and unique. Hub City Deli is open for breakfast as well. Located on Pleasant Plains Extended, just down the road from Jackson Christian. back for the final segment we've got the head mentor and of course our co-host and great baseball and football coach brian bullard here gentlemen let's tell the folks what they need to know about the week coming up so before we get into um st george's and and kind of coach palmer's thoughts on them uh we are definitely uh, excited to have our family tailgate um this friday and it'll be out on the lower playground um, and, and, you know, we're asking folks to come out, bring a dinner, bring a chair, bring your kids, um, just get some excitement 
about Jackson Christian football before the game um, and just some good time to fellowship and, and be with one another. And um, I, I'm expecting a good crowd on Friday. Love playing at home, love playing in front of our fans. And, and they showed up. They filled both those sets of bleachers um, at North Point the other night, plus people down on the ground. Um, and, and we have – I think we have the best fans around. Absolutely. And I want to say visit the crew that sits in the chairs at the east end zone too. Uh, absolutely. Right. There's there's some characters down that way. And um, i got to give Miss April a big shout-out. Yeah. Jeremiah's mom, she's down there yelling and screaming. Um, so we're we're just excited. We're excited to be back at home. We like going on the road. We like going into somebody else's place and trying to beat them. But we are extremely excited to be at home. And everybody come out to that tailgate, um, and, and it's a good time to meet new people and new families. And hopefully that's what we'll do. You're going to see a new addition added out by the field house. There will be some guys grilling out there. We're excited about that. Um, and, and just all the supporters there, Jackson Christian. Guys, big game coming up. We'll turn it over to the coaches. Coach Palmer, you know, St. George is coming in, well-coached football team, um, you know, Coach McLean made some notes for us. They got a former Jackson Christian graduate uh, leading their defense. Um, let, let's start. Let's start on the on the defensive side of the ball. What do we need to do? A couple of keys, a couple of things that that we need to do um, to be successful. Yeah, absolutely. And St. George's, like you said, is a very well coached football program in, from Memphis, and they're well known in that area. Uh, defensively, well, we need to stop the run. They have a very big offensive line and physical offensive line. Uh, their quarterback. Um, is really good outside the pocket, so we need to keep him in the pocket and, and force him into a pocket passer. Push your mic up a little bit. There you go. Yeah, I was going. <laughs> we want to hear you. <laughs> hey, so, I, didn't, I didn't want you to think I was over <laughs> here. Hey, hey, hey come on. So anytime a guy can run, uh, bring, bring it down and run, that, that poses different uh, threats to your defense and, and to our defense, and, and we're, we're working at it. We're coaching our defensive linemen up and our linebackers, and – um, hopefully we can do a good job containing him. We're not. He's going to get his runs. He's going to get his yards. He's a good athlete, uh, but it's just limiting the big plays. Uh, let's go. And to they also do a great job formation and putting you in a bind with their formations with what they do schematically. So it's going to be, it's going to be kind of a chess match, showing our hand, showing their hand, uh, back and forth all night, try to mix up the looks for them. Those first four minutes are awesome because uh, you're seeing kind of what they're trying to do and what we're trying to do, and then it's and it's who's going to make adjustments and. Um, offensively, um, what do we what do we need to do to build on a 100-yard rusher, um, gauge over 100 yards passing? Um, the the thing we probably all can look and go, we need to clean up some of the, the miscues and the, the penalties and things like that pre-snap. Uh, what, what are you looking for offensively from our guys Friday against St. George's? Well, always. Uh, one thing, you know, that we always hit on in practice is we always say be us and execute. We're not trying to be anybody else but Jackson Christian and being the best version of ourselves. So each and every play going out, owning your 111th of the field and, and maximizing that opportunity, that play, and then stacking plays. Uh, obviously, we want to stay ahead of the chains. Uh, we like to stay ahead of the chains. That allows us to call our offense the way that we want to call it. Um, and, and it goes back to just getting the ball to our playmakers in space, creating that either formationally or with our motions uh, to get the balls to our playmakers in space. Absolutely. And we have some guys that we know are, are dangerous with the, the football in their hands, and uh, we're, we're excited for uh, another opportunity to showcase our guys offensively and defensively along with, obviously, our special teams. Coach, give me, give me one thought um, for – for the fans or for just our program, what you would like to say, and then, then we'll wrap this thing up. Absolutely. You hit on it with our fans that traveled to North Point. We said we filled up both of the bleachers, and there was people lining the fence on the visitor side. And, and that's always great to see when you when you take the show on the road and, and you go out and you're in someone else's um, – turf and you can look at your sideline and you can get energy from that and we're excited for friday night for a home opener uh the family tailgate that's going to be happening so if you're uh, in the jackson christian community or you're you're wanting to come out and just see what jackson christian's about that tailgate would be great to do that and then come on in for the game that kicks off at 7 30 uh due to some heat in in early august but we're excited for our home opener we're excited to have a, a electric atmosphere Absolutely, and, and he's right, 7.30. Um, we Pre-game at 7 yeah. because of that, and please remember that. Folks, you don't want to miss, the to me, the greatest high school show on turf. We can do it all. That's right. Coach, uh, you know, we had to make some adjustments. Uh, hopefully we'll be back at Hub City 
uh, next Tuesday. But, you know, not a better place to do this than Jerry Eskew Gymnasium in the lobby. And what a great guy and, and, and mentor he is for a lot of folks. And yeah. Well, you know he was here for the Jamboree. Uh, he's, he's here. He's Even, usually uh, here. Yeah, every he's time, around. Unless, unless he's over in Arkansas. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's not a week that doesn't go by that I don't get a text from, from Mr. Eskew. One Either of the encouragement or just asking what the game plan is. That it's just awesome to have his support. I'm just thankful for the banner back here. That's I'd right. like to borrow that, <laughs> and put it behind us next week or something. Thanks, right. Mr. Gary, uh, for for getting us going and and being able to to change the 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 venue and and we we love the show, and our guys did a tremendous job tonight. And weren't they great? They did awesome, yeah. and we're yeah. proud of them. Even the guy over there, Shane Sisko, was a pretty good guy, too. <laughs> anyway, folks, we've got to wrap it up. We don't want to, but time constraints. And we will 7 o'clock pregame show, and you don't want to miss it. First of all, you don't want to miss it because of David Wade. He uh, he will cover all kinds of things. We're going to have highlights. Then at 730, like I said, the football team you want to support. The Big Blue will be on the field, and we'll get to see these guys in action and other players, and next week we'll have another show back from Hub City Daily next week. Thanks for your time this time. Until next time, good night, all.